Okay everybody, and now today I'm going to do my first phase of my video game collection. Starting off with my Sega collection. So, okay. I've got to four Sega Genesis games, technically five. Uh, well, in cartridges at least. Uh, and I got a total of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Oh yeah, 22 Sega Saturn games, 2 Dreamcast games, uh, a Flash cartridge, and uh, some burned games. So anyway, enough dilly-dallying, and let's get on with it, okay? This is NFL 95. Released in 1995, I believe, or 1994. It's a former rental from AJ Video Games, Canada's largest game video game exchange. <laughs> There's your address right there. Buy, sell, rent, and repair. Buy the rest. No, buy the best, rent the rest. Canada's largest video game ex exchange. More sports with uh, NHL 96. Uh, from EA. As you can see, this is an EA game that has this yellow lock on it. I'm not sure what that's supposed to do. Assembled in Puerto Rico. This is Ten Head from Ballistic. Released in 1993. And yes, this is a game from my childhood. No manual? Lost it. Actually, uh, no, it has no manual. The manual is, is far lost. And here's your cartridge for Tin Head. And here is Virtua Racing. This is a port of an arcade game from Sega, released in 1992. And of course, the only Sega Genesis game to use the Sega SVP, SVP chip. Sega Virtual Processing Power. Yep. And you'll see why in a minute. Or um, a few seconds, rather. 16 main 16 main cartridge Sega arcade pad recommended and one or two yeah one or two players also available on the Sega 32X and the Sega Saturn and there's your large cartridge for virtual racing in fact, the only Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive game to have the SVP chip inside. You know, it's supposed to render all those polygons. That's what it's there for. Now, Virtual Racing on the 32X is an improvement over the Sega Genesis release. And the Sega Saturn version, which is developed by Time Warner Interactive. Which, to be honest, I mixed on. Actually, I've never played it. To, to be honest, I've never played it, so I'm not sure what to say. But I do hear that uh, the 32X version is the best. It's also on the, on the PlayStation 2 and the Nintendo Switch, which is the newest version of Virtual Racing. But enough of, the, enough of that now. Time to move on to the Saturn games. Starting off with... Advanced Variable Geo, released on March 14th of 1997 from Technical Group Laboratory. This is an all-female fighting game. I do have another one, which I'll show pretty soon.
Main character is Yuka Takuchi. From Advanced Variable Geo. And yes, keep in mind that this is a port of um, that game that was on the PC 9801 from NEC. And it's also available on the PC Engine CD, the Super Famicom, and the original PlayStation. And there's your disc for Advanced Variable Geo on the Saturn. That's it. Moving on. Next up is a game that actually got localized by Work Designs, but don't have it. Instead, I got this print, which is a Japanese copy to Albert Odyssey, Legend of Aldean from Sunsoft. You know. The company behind um, the Batman games on the NES, or Waku Waku 7 on the Neo Geo, you know, this and that. You see, the manual is a bit water damaged, but that's okay. Just a little bit. Not by much, though. Disc. And there you go. That is Albert Odyssey for ya. Next up, a game that rarely, rarely gets mentioned. And this is Arcana Strikes from Takara. Developed by Red. Released on um, December 11th, 1997. Oh yeah, I forgot. Albert Odyssey was released on August 9th of 1996. That's the Japanese print. North American print was released on July 31st, 1997. And yeah... Whatever this game is, this is supposed to be like a primitive Bod and Kytos, which is on the GameCube from Namco. But this is, um, Arcana Strikes on the, Sa on the Sega Saturn. Which is a, a unique game. And yes, I'm not sure who, the, who that dude is. The main protagonist himself. I'm not sure what his actual name is. Uh, but uh, he can be referred to as the protagonist of this game. Enough said. Next up is a 2D fighter that takes place uh, on air and not on the ground. And this is uh, Astra Stupid Stars. Oops, my mistake. I meant to say Astra Superstars. Which, which makes use of the 4 megabyte RAM cartridge. Released on August 6th of 1998. Huh. There we go, and there's your disc for Astro Stupid Stars. Oops, I meant Astro Superstars. Polish by Sunsoft. Next up, I have another um, another all female fighter, and this is Oscar 120% to Burning Fist Limited from Ascadancha, released on. October 9th of 1997. Ask Kodanta slash Phil and Cafe. Phil and Cafe is the developer of this game, slash Family Soft. Ask Kodanta is the publisher. And yes, this is our first Sega Saturn game that we bought. 
Keep in mind that we have no North American prints of any Saturn game. All of them are Japanese. Why? Because most of the Japanese <laughs> Japanese Saturn games are much cheaper than the North American North American Saturn games. <laughs> But not all of them were cheap. Some were actually quite expensive or hell, even valuable. Such as um, Secret Assassin Taramaru. Man, that game costs about $600. As well as um, Radiant Silver Gun, which costs about, uh, about $400. Anyway, there's your disc. Now we're moving on now. Why well, only take a Saturn game with the Saturn Collection label? And this is Bulk Slash, which was released on July 11th of 1997, just two weeks before Good Burger came out in theaters in North America. And yes, this is a mech game, Bulk Slash. Inspired by Gundam. Let's see. How am I going to get this out? Oh, never mind. I just did. And well, what do you know? It's a portable manual. As you can see here, here's an AV or a third party controller. And this is unusual for a Sega Saturn game. You fold it to open it up. Never seen a Saturn manual like this before, honestly. And yes, I've, I've seen plenty of fold-up manuals before. On one PSP game, which is um, Bleach Soul, Soul Carnival. And yes, I do own that game for the PSP. And uh, plenty of Nintendo 3DS games. Uh, maybe something like uh, Bravely Default or Fire Emblem Awakening. You know, one such example. But enough said about Bulk Slash. And there's your disc for Bulk Slash, released in 1997, and this is a 1998 reprint, released on uh, December 10th of 1998, I assume. I would assume so. Next up is a 3D fighting game. Here is Dead or Alive by Tecmo, released on October 9th of 1997. Well, look at that, a postcard. A feeling postcard? Now, I've seen a lot of those in my life. On plenty of Funimation DVDs and Blu-rays, a few video games, and especially Japanese games, where I've seen the most on. And yes, this is one of the few Sega Saturn games to use the very high resolution, the very high resolution mode, similar to games such as um, Virtua Fighter 2 and Last Bronx, which were also 3D fighters as well. And there's your disc for Dead or Alive, originally released in 1996 in the arcades. Came home to the Saturn, as well as the the Sony PlayStation, and the original Xbox a few years later. And enough said.
Next up is a late release for the Sega Saturn. This is the Vice Rain. Published by MediaWorks. <laughs> Developed by Starlight Mary. Oh, and look at this. The CRI ADX logo. So that you'd see on the Sega Dreamcast. Game was released on February 25th of 1999. This is a visual novel slash tactical role-playing game, or in Japan, simulation RPG. See that here? It's Dreamcast. Yeah, this is a late release game for the Sega Saturn. And yes, the last Sega Saturn game was um, Final Fight Revenge, which came out on March 30th of 2000. But I'd say uh, software support could have lasted longer until May 30th, 2003. That's just me, though. And enough said about Device Rain. Also available on the Sony PlayStation. Now next, I have a two-disc game. This is Soul Hackers, or in that case, Devil Survivor Soul Hackers <laughs> from Atlas, which came out on December 4th of 1997. Or, wait, no, maybe it was November 13th of 1997. Yeah. Part of the, Sh the Sheen Mega Me Tensei series, <laughs> which, uh, which, you know, Alice is known for that. <laughs> Just an ad for cards from Aspect to and yet again another fill me out card. Affordable one. Foldable, not affordable. So I did get this game for cheap. I got it as a Christmas present back in 2019, along with Arcana Strikes. Uh, and yes, uh, I forgot to tell you that I got Volk Slash for Christmas in 2020, which is uh, which was three months ago. First disc to this game, and. Uh, there's your there's your second disc, uh, and unfortunately, this game did not come with a manual. Well, my copy at least. <laughs> also available on the Sony PlayStation, and it's also on the Nintendo 3DS. And yes, the 3DS version actually did come out in North America. Neither the Saturn or PlayStation versions came out here in North America. Oh well. What up, bummer? Next up, this is a 2D fighting game. Groove on Fights from Atlas. <laughs> Part of the Power Instinct series. And of course, on the front cover, you got a female rebel cop. <laughs> Her name is Solace. <laughs> and here you got an engineer. His name is Larry. No, no, not Larry the Cucumber. Uh, whoever this dude is, I forgot his name. Maybe I'll check in the manual. Uh, Wade, was it? Uh, I forget. It's in Japanese. Released on May 19th of 1997. And it advertises uh, the multi tap for the Saturn. Now, most of these Saturn games have a hidden soundtrack with a few exceptions. This one is not one of them. This one has a hidden soundtrack. And yes, that's the, that's three characters seen as chibis on the disc. 
to this game. Well, enough said. Now we'll be moving on to Magic Knight Gay Earth. Oops, I meant to say Magic Knight Gray Earth, which for some reason is posted by Sega. I would prefer this game being posted by Tomy, you know, just like the Super Famicom Game Boy editions, uh, including the Game Gear. But no, both the Sega games of Ray Earth, actually three of them were posted by Sega. Two on the Game Gear and one on, one on the Saturn, which is this one you're seeing right here. And yes, I do own Machinate Ray Earth on Blu-ray from Discotech Media. Oh, and just so you know, there's a, there's two games of Ray Earth on the Game Boy as well. One on the Super Famicom. This game came out on August 25th of 1995. And yes, this was the last Saturn game to be released in North America. It's a late 1998 release. So it was close to being released in 1999. Of course, the three main characters of Ray Earth are um, Hikaru Shido, the one with the red hair, um, Umi Ryuzaki, the one with blue hair, and um, Fuhu Oji, who has um, brown hair, not green hair. And yes, did I ever mention that the Saturn, the no, no, the North American release is posed by Working Designs. But uh, however, that game is expensive as hell. You know the North American print, uh, but here we have the Japanese print, which is very cheap, only about twenty dollars. And yes, Anthony did get this for Christmas a couple of years ago. And, uh, that's your disc. And enough said about Ray Earth. Uh, now moving on to the Capcom fighting game. And that would happen to, happen to be... Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. Released on October 22nd of 1998. Also available on the Sony PlayStation. And yes, uh, this is the Superior Port, too. Uh, the PlayStation ports the inferior ports, I hear. And yes, the, the inferior port got a worldwide release, while this one only stuck in Japan. Which is a, quite a... which is quite the bummer. And here's your disc for this game. Released a month before the Sega Dreamcast launched in Japan. Next up, I've got to my only Gundam game I have on the Saturn, and it is Momosu Gundam Side Story 2, released on December 20th of 1996. Now about this game, not that one, this one. It was released on October 2nd, no, October 22nd of 1998. Just so you know. And yes, I didn't mention the release date to this game as well. And yes, this is um, a 3D first person shooter. And yes, just so you know, it's nothing like Doom or Quake or um, Power Slave. Both of those games, no, all three of those games are on the Sega Saturn. This game has you inside of a mecha doing your objectives, such as shooting your enemy down. And what do you know about the manual? It's actually glued on. And yes, uh, 
Here's an ad for our mobile suit gun of sight story one, which is available now. And here you got your twin stick for the Saturn. And you know what game that's compatible with? Oh yes, Virtual Long by Sega. Oh, what's this? We have an ad for, um, I don't know what that is. Uh, Gundam? Oh yes, it is Gundam. Cheaterom Hybrid for Macintosh and Windows. Release date December 18th, 1996 at uh, 8,800 yen, or in that case, uh, 88 dollars. In truth, oh yeah. And there's your disc for Mobile Suit Gundam Side Story 2 on the Sega Saturn. Next up is Princess Crown from Atlas, released on December 11th of 1997. This is a 2D action RPG. Developed by um, Vanillaware. And here's one thing about the case. As you can see, the center there, the center here is a bit broken. So I'd better be careful with it. Next up we have Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner. This is the first one, the Not Still Hackers, released on Christmas Day of 1995. Also available on the PSP. Oh yeah, I forgot. Princess Crown is also available on the PSP as well. disc and there you go that is devil summoner shin megami tensei for ya next up is a tactical role-playing game released on april 25th of april 25th of 1997 and this is slayer's royal published by esp and katokawa and of course you know Slayers, uh, you know, Lena Inverse, uh, that orange haired sorceress. Uh. And yes, I have no idea how to play this game well. 
We'll just have my ass be beaten seconds. Well, that's how I played the game for the first time. Maybe we'll give it another go eventually. And yes, I do happen to own the, own the first three seasons of Slayers on DVD from Funimation. And there you go. That is Slayers for you. Slayers Royal. Next up is another 2D fighting game. But this time it's Soku Kai Sonic Council. Released on January 29th of 1998. Published by Ben Presto. Developed by Sims. Yeah, Sims. Originated in the Gamma's magazine. And yeah. It actually originated as a manga. You know, just for that magazine. Supposedly, the main protagonist is I Honda. Yeah. And there's your disc for this game. Next up we have uh, the Super Dimension the Super Dimension Macross uh, from Bandai Visual. I as I would prefer to say it like uh, Macross. The Super Dimension Fortress Macross. Do you remember love? Released on June 6th of 1997 on the Sega Saturn. Published by Big West and Bandai Emotion. Based on the 1984 animated movie. First disc. And second disc to this game. So yes, this game is basically split up into two. And you know what? I got this game for cheap. I'm glad I did. Worth the price. Now next up is... Uh, It's an, uh, it's an adventure game of some sort, and this is Those Who Hunt Elves. And yes, I do happen to own this on Blu-ray from Sentai Filmworks. Publisher is Ultron. Also available on the Sony PlayStation. Released on April 25th of 1997. 
Oh yeah. This game is also on the Sony PlayStation. This game. But it was released at a later date. May 27th of 1999. First disc to this game. Night Gun Peripheral. There's a um, Rubber Pit, whatever that game is, and Mighty Hits. See that Light Gun Peripheral there? Feeling Card. This one is the game. And this two is your special features. Featuring um, ads and, uh, and illustrations. And there you go. That is Those Who Hunt Illustria, released in spring of 1997. Now next up is a port of a Neo Geo game released on December 18th of 1997. And it is Tinku Star Sprite 2. Or in that case, Twinkle Star Sprites from EK. And yes, this is the ultimate port to this game. The Sega Saturn is loaded with extras, uh, while the other ports, not so loaded. And there's your second disc uh, with the extras. Uh. First disc, the first disc has the game on both uh, arcade and Saturn modes. Uh. The only Neo Geo port that we have on the Sega Saturn. Here's a strange title, Battleva? From Victor slash JVC, developed by Ancient. Known for doing Sonic the Hedgehog on the Game Gear and Master System. 3D Phonic. Released on December 6th of 1996. This is a vehicular combat game that takes place on a 2D plane and not a 3D plane as in um, Twisted Metal on the PlayStation. And yes, it's another Saturn game that supports the multi-tap, six up to six players. <laughs> And yes, it's also compatible with the uh, 3D analog pad. And there's your disc for Battleva. And now for the last Sega Saturn game that we have is 
X-Men vs. Street Fighter, released on November 27th of 1997 from Capcom. There was no, sp no spine cover or back cover when we bought this game, so it's all blank. And a blank transparent shell. And that's a case. This is the superior port, an almost arcade perfect port, port of X Men vs. Street Fighter, and that's for the Sony PlayStation. That port, well, the same can't be said. It's lacking in comparison. And yes, this game does make use of the RAM cartridge, you know, for extra memory. Now, yes, I do hear that uh, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Capcom is arcade perfect. This one is almost arcade perfect. There may be a few frames missing, but I haven't noticed. And there you go. That is my Sega Saturn collection. 22 games, and now moving on to... The only two Sega Dreamcast games, well, actually just one, technically. The other one is um, a program of some sort. This is the King of Fighters Dream Match 1999, released on October 22nd of 1999 on the Sega Dreamcast. And yes, this actually did end up getting released in North America, because... Uh, None of the Sega Saturn SNK games ended up being released in North America. None of them. The only official Dreamcast game that we have... And yes, it is compatible with the Sega Saturn, no, Sega Dreamcast uh, arcade board and uh, the Neo Geo Pocket. Uh. Oh, damn it. VMU compatible, standard controller compatible, and arcade stick compatible. Up to two players, and uh, it's uh, it's link comp compatible with uh, King of Fighters R2 on the Neo Geo Pocket Color. And uh, there's your disc for the game. Here is Web Browser 2.0 with Sega Net. Features uh, Sega Swirl. You know, that puzzle game with the snake in it. Uh, and there's your disc for Web Browser 2.0 with Signet. And there you have it. That is my official Sega <laughs> Sega collection with two Genesis no, with four Genesis titles, 22 Saturn titles, and uh, Only one, technically two, Dreamcast games. And anyway, that'll do it for this part, too. So, I'm going to end here. So, yeah, I'll end it here. Remember I said I wasn't done with my Sega collection? Well, I'll show you my reproduction games on, on the Saturn. As well as something else. <laughs> This is Panzer Dragoon Saga, which was released on um, 
April 30th, 1998. And man, this game costs about $800. And that's the North American version. The European version costs about $500. But the Japanese print, it's very cheap. Like $40, 40 to 60. Here's Reed and Silver Gun from ESP, developed by Treasure. Entertainment stopped for publishing, published it. And this was released on um, July 23rd of 1998. Disc. Comes in a transparent DVD case. Uh, well, that game came in a thick case. And now for something different. Uh, Sega Saturn backup unlocker. Now, I'm not completely done with it just yet. You know, phase one on my video game collection, the Sega parts. No, the Sega collection. This is the Terra Onion Mega SD flash card to. Compatible with the Sega CD. There we go. There's your cartridge. Uh, comes in a clear, dark plastic shell. And lastly, I'm going to show you my burnt games. Uh, you know, burning software onto a CD. And put it in your Sega Saturn and Dreamcast. Well, I did just that. So why? Now, why did I do that? Because some of these games would be very hard to come by and quite expensive. <laughs> the only Namco game on the Sega Saturn, just to make up for no Namco games being on the on the Saturn. Along with, um, Mr. Driller, um, Namco Museum, and, um, Pac-Man? Oh, I forgot. Whatever it's called. The premiere game for the Sega Dreamcast. Japan only game. Treasure developed game. Still haven't found an ISO to this game. Developed by CRI. This is an SNK fighting game known as Guerrilla Mark of the Wolves. Released in 1999. Survival Horror by Capcom. No, I don't understand how to play this game. It's called the Mobile Suit Gundam 0079 Side Story. Rise from the Ashes. Man, I really don't understand how to play it. Guardian Heroes, that one's on the Sega Saturn. Product Justice on the Dreamcast. This is supposed to be like a survival horror game. Blue Stinger, Can Spike by Capcom, I believe. Trigger Hard Excelica. One of the very last Sega Dreamcast games ever made. It was released on February 22nd, 2007. 
The very last Dreamcast game was actually Carus, which came out two weeks later after this game. Zero Alive 2 from Tecmo, from Capcom, SNK, um, Capcom, Zombie Revenge, or Beat'em Up. Here is um, Cyber Troopers Virtual On Oratorio Tangram, which was released on uh, released in 2000. Published by Activision, developed by Sega. Well, that's the North American version. Another SNK fighter. Here's um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the United Kingdom version. That's where it originated, by the way. Breeding Rangers on the Saturn, the House of the Dead on the Saturn. Marvel Superheroes on the Sega Saturn, X-Men Children of the Atom, and yes, this is a poorly written Sega Saturn logo. Die Hard Arcade, another poorly made Saturn logo. Thunder Force 5, um, the North American printed rares from Working Designs, there's Hexen, Doom, Sucker Tyson, aka um, Sakura Wars, Karuga, Dragon Force, uh, and yes, here's a poorly written Dreamcast logo. Psychic Force by Taito, Sega Ages on the Saturn, Cotton 2 on the Saturn, and Puyo Puyo Fever on the Dreamcast. Well, maybe I shouldn't mention all the names, but I just did anyway. Not all of them, mind you. Or just some of them. Now, do you want to see what's on my Mega SD cartridge? Well, I'm going to do just that. No, if you'll excuse me. There. Three D analog logo. And there you have it. <laughs> That'll do it for phase one of my video game collection. Part one. The Sega games. <laughs> See you in part two of my video game collection, which I will cover my Nintendo games. See you then, and ta-ta. See ya.